from the diary of my grandma Fanny. And Fanny is the girl in the picture that you see. This would be August 7th, 1942. I canned 10 quarts of mixed vegetables and I went over to Martin Groves and got a basket of tomatoes. Before I share with you any more of my mountain videos, I'm gonna share with you what I'm doing today. So for me, this is Monday and you're gonna see this on Tuesday. I gotta take a break for a minute. <laughs> I've been out here for a long time. When I got home, I didn't realize what a couple days can make in a garden. Let's see, we had flooding, we had 100 degree temperatures, and my deer had lots and lots of fun. My deer was eating everything. But luckily for me, all of my food is already produced. So what they ate really doesn't affect me anymore. But, I have lots and lots of green beans to pick. So this is the end of my green beans. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to harvest all of the beans and then I'm going to use the greens for fodder for the garden. I'm telling you, I'm beat already. As you can see on my face, it's probably at least 95. The humidity is just awful. So one thing I realized when I go up north, there was no humidity whatsoever. The days were hot, but you didn't have this humidity that came from the ocean. I live just close enough to the eastern seaboard to get all of this moisture humidity. Whew, and it is almost unlivable. If I could turn around today and go right back where I came from, I would in a heartbeat. But I know that's not feasible. At least not now anyhow. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick the green beans, every single bean off these stalks. I have two 60 foot rows. I picked one 60 foot row of red beets and I have another two rows of 60 feet of red beets. And I wasn't gonna pick them, but the deer keep pulling up out of the ground and then it's gonna make them all wilted. So I do have something that I can use for the deer and it works great only if it doesn't rain heavy. And that has been the motto of this summer, lots and lots of heavy rain. In fact, it's the second leading rainfall in our state ever since they took uh, records. So it's the second highest rainfall for our state. So I'm going to pan the camera down and you can watch me pick beans a little bit. And so I have the harvest beans. I'm hoping to get harvesting a lot of these herbs too this week. August is the month of just extreme amount of work. Right now I have a bushel of tomatoes um, cooking down for sauce. I have pickles in the refrigerator getting ready to have to can them, the cucumbers cut up. I'll have beets to do in a couple days. This is what homesteading's like. This is what homesteading's like for a woman. You know, you see all of these neat pioneer movies and it looks so romantic, but I'm telling you, it's not. There are times, yes, that you can sit and enjoy yourself and it's peaceful, but a lot of times it's just plain down work, absolute work. So survival skills for me aren't as hard as it would be for some people because I'm used to having to work really hard. I notice the older I get, I'm 48, it's getting harder and harder for me because I've been so out of shape over the winter. So I'm gonna really strive this year to work more outside in the winter to keep my body from getting so soft because when springtime comes, it's like I have so much to do. So these green beans I'm gonna can. I have a lot of green beans from other years as well. They came at, with a poor start because the deer were eating at them, but they really, really matured great. And so let's get picking some of these because my work's only just begun. <laughs> Thank you. 
What really scares me most is if things would ever get really bad, the majority of people don't know how to produce their own food and it would be so challenging physically and mentally. It would just be so hard. It's hard for me and I've done it every year since about 15 years ago and it's getting hard for me. So that would be really, really a challenge for so many people who, who have no idea where our food comes from. They don't know that food doesn't come from the grocery store. It comes from the ground. I mean, what would you do if you had to grow your own food? What would you do if you had to preserve it? Do you have someone in your family that knows how to do these things? These are things to think about. They're not things to scare you, they're things to teach you and things for you to learn about. Not everybody can do that. That's why bartering comes in handy. If you can't grow your own food and you can't produce it and you can't harvest it, what do you have that you could barter in return? So think about these items and think about these things. And don't be scared of them, let them teach you. All right, there are my beans. Now the rule of thumb is harvest, preserve within 24 hours. So I will be canning these tomorrow. And I use my Eco Wash Spin. I actually can spin all of my produce really clean and it's so much easier using this. I just love it. So I don't use it for washing my clothes, I use it for washing my produce. All right. I gotta clean up that patch and then we're gonna go on to my red beets. All right, my friends. I got half the garden worked and half the garden harvested. I did one five gallon bucket of beets, a five gallon bucket of green beans, potatoes are harvested. So where that pile of stuff is, I gotta go from there down. I gotta finish harvesting my cucumbers today and clean up that area and work on some of these herbs. Everything is a wilderness. August is really hard to keep after everything, to keep it weeded, to keep it looking nice. And because my garden is in my front yard, I try to have it very pristine looking and very clean because I don't want it looking sloppy. So I got a lot of work to do today, but I thought I would take you along on my journey today and harvesting food and cleaning up the garden. And now I'm gonna show you how I can my potatoes that I harvested today. So this will be end of me talking. Take care everyone and we'll see you guys tomorrow. We got some tomato recipes coming up, some canning recipes, more herbs and lots and lots of wilderness videos. In fact, I went all by myself on a little journey and I can't wait to show you what it's like. All right, everyone, take care. We'll see you guys tomorrow. What are we working on today? We're canning potatoes. So the first thing you want to do is, if you want to have great canned potatoes without the starch, you have to boil your water, drop your potatoes in it for five minutes, and then add fresh hot water to your jars of potatoes. Then you will have potatoes without all that starch. Plus your jars will look really pretty and not have that cloudy water. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some of our potatoes and we're gonna put them in the boiling water for about five minutes. And what this does is it's cook some of the starch out.
right, so the potatoes are done. Now what we're going to do is we're going to drain them and put them in our jars. All right, so we're going to put them all in the jars and I'll show you what it looks like when we're done. All right, so what we did is we put one teaspoon of Lipton onion soup mix in each quart. We filled it with hot boiling water. We used this fresh tech and I used the water method so we had the boiling water from there. And that's what they look like and now we're going to can them. And the potatoes are all done. So the potatoes are canned with Lipton onion soup mix. So it's kind of a beef flavor in the potatoes. You can them this way and you will have no starch in your potatoes. If this is something that interests you, I have more videos on canning with Lipton onion soup mix in the videos at the end of this one. Give them a try and watch it. I can carrots, potatoes, and green beans all with Lipton onion soup mix.